Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Daniel Smiley. I'm going to present uh, a model for TPMS, which is Tire Pressure Monitor System, on behalf of uh, Ozen Engineering Incorporation. In this model, uh, actually in this presentation, we are going to cover a uh, few steps in order to make the completed model. Initially, we talk about what TPMS is, and then the WIP and Helix antenna, the solution steps, different phases that we had to make the model completed. And at the end, we'll show the result as well as some setup of the model. And then we'll explain what the next step is, which is the using the Emit software to calculate some uh, link budget. So for those who don't know what TPMS is, it's a device, basically an antenna and uh, with a circuit board that is uh, and, a, and a sensor that is inside the uh, uh, car tires, commercial or uh, small or big vehicle, all of them should have it. And basically it detects the pressure inside the tire and uh, using the antenna and the PCB, uh, transmit that information to the car and the driver can see different uh, tires and their uh, pressure in, in the uh, cluster. Why is it recommended? Uh, previously, uh, it was a good thing to have, but uh, recently there is a rule as you see down here, as of 2018 in uh, US and in as of 2012, in November, all new passenger car mother must be equipped with TPMS. Uh, there are a few reasons for that. Uh, the main ones are safety, efficiency, longevity, and, and ride. Uh, if you, if the driver knows he's getting a flat tire, yeah, he'll be notified in advance, and then they can pull over in order to avoid the accident. Many of accidents are because the tire is getting flat, the driver uh, couldn't uh, figure that out or couldn't notice, and then, uh, the accident happens. It also uh, helps with the fuel efficiency and saves uh, drivers in the long, ter long term to save money and uh, fuel. So it will definitely pay back the investment. There are uh, different antennas that are used in, in TPMS. Uh, the main one is the Helix antenna. And as you can see in the picture on the right hand side, the helix go inside the valve and the valve system is used to house that uh, antenna. So that's for radiation as well as the protection. And plus, you know, it should be something universal that works for all tires. So that's one of the best uh, geometry and uh, for this type of antenna. Uh, the helix also helps with uh, having uh, more gain. So in this uh, uh, simulation, we use the same concept. We use a whip antenna, as you can see here. It's a ground, uh, and then a whip antenna on top. This is the front view. And then we added a helix uh, antenna here. Uh, and there are different uh, parameters for this uh, helix antenna that we're uh, going to talk soon. But uh, how is it uh, uh, placed in the model? As you can, as, as I explained, this is the antenna that we had, and then uh, this is the rim. So we made a, we made this rim, and we just make it made it very simple uh, to avoid complexity uh, for a representative of a, a rim. So it has a main part that is here and it has upper body and a lower body. And then there's a hole here that we put uh, uh, antenna there. So uh, after that, we're going to um, talk about the simulation. As you can see, there are different uh, steps here. We divided it into different steps from a simple model to a, a complex one. So first, uh, the geometry of antenna is made and we run simulation. We do the tuning and uh, 
each step we do that uh, to make sure that we, we, we're getting the best S11. Same thing happens with the rim. And then again, we tune it, then we add the car box, and then we tune it again. And then we add the last antenna, which is the receiver antenna. Uh, and then we show the post-processing. So at the beginning, we make one antenna, we add the rim, then make put the four antennas together. And after that, we add the fifth antenna. So uh, let's talk about the simulating the antenna only. So at the very first step, we have the uh, antenna here and it has the different parameters that you can change to tune the antenna. Uh, the main ones are, are length of the whip antenna, which is this uh, line here, as you can see this line here. The number of turns of the antenna, how many turns you have, and the more turns, the longer the helix will be. So uh, length of the helix antenna and turns are the same. As you can see, there is intersection here. So that's another parameter that we can change. Uh, also, there are gap between each turn. So that's another parameter we can change. And also, there is a radius for all these turns. We can increase or decrease that uh, radius. So we use these different uh, parameters to tune the antenna. Once we run it, uh, we uh, tried uh, many different parameters. Uh, it will be too much to show, so we just show but two of them here. But uh, if presenters, if people are interested, we can uh, show more details. Uh, the wire diameter are studied here 4.5, 5, and 5.5 .5 millimeter. And as you can see, uh, the deep frequency is shifting to the right. We also use different turns, as you can see, there are different turns. It's 6, 12, and 18, and it's, it's not linear. It just jumps uh, to this deep point. So we, we played with these uh, different parameters and then ended up in having this uh, initial run, uh, which, which gives us the best S11. So as you can see, it is uh, around 315 megahertz. That's our goal here because of the standard of uh, car industry and it's about minus 10 db as you can see uh, here is the initial run that we make uh, these are the same antenna uh, just different uh, plane and i uh, we can see the e field here and if you want to have a better visualization we have the model here you can turn it around so you have a good feeling of the e-field in this area. So pay attention that at, at this point, it's only the uh, antenna only. There is no rim, no car box, nothing. So once we do that, we're happy with the result. We go to the next one. Uh, please uh, feel free to check uh, the next step in the next uh, video.